Here's a very interesting GI question. The graph here looks pretty complicated, but when you read it along with the question text, you'll be able to make sense of everything. Let's just get down to reading. This is about a certain study that was conducted on a 10,000 person sample. That means not on the entire population. 10,000 people were chosen as a sample and the study was conducted. Now, these 10,000 people came from where? From country Y and from the adult population of country Y. Okay, so that's, that's decided. So in the entire country, there will be a huge adult population from from those we took 10,000 people as our sample. Now what happened was based on this study the unbroken curve on the graph plots an association between first where is the unbroken curve this is the unbroken curve because I do see the other two are dotted so broken this is the one solid curve that we have so we're talking about this what does this show the unbroken curve plots an association between daily consumption of various amounts of beverage Z and the relative risk of contracting disease X compared to something else. So first of all, these are the two quantities that this unbroken curve shows. And if I try to identify them here, I do see beverage Z mentioned here on the X axis. It's about how many hundred ml glasses of this are consumed per day, which means this zero means nothing is consumed because it's, a, it's zero glasses of beverage Z. This is when one glass of beverage Z is consumed, which means hundred ml. This is where nine glasses are consumed which means 900 ml so along the x-axis as you move to the right your consumption of beverage z is increasing while on the y-axis you are measuring the relative risk so risk has been given here as numbers we, we're yet to understand what this is now this is 0.75 of a risk this is 1.1 and so on how do you interpret this risk the key word here is relative risk that means this is risk compared to something else and that is what the rest of this statement says if we continue reading here it says that this gives you relative risk of contracting disease compared to what? The risk with no consumption of beverage Z. So that is indicated by 1. So if I see 1 on my Y axis, it's here and you see this horizontal line, this has been drawn. This horizontal line gives you the risk with no consumption. Now you can actually make sense of why this is with no consumption. Look how it's moving to the right along the x-axis and obviously consumption has got nothing to do. It's nothing about how many glasses were consumed because this is no consumption. And that's why the risk throughout in this particular case is a constant. It's not something going down, going up along with consumption. It is something that is not changing at all. And this is the one. So with respect to this one then, we are trying to see what is the risk associated with consumption actually. So if I again try to understand this a little bit more, just think about this case where it's zero consumption, zero glasses. Obviously then zero glasses is the same as no consumption. That's why at this place, these are both together. The horizontal line, which is for no consumption and the solid curve that we just talked about, they are overlapping here, they're intersecting here. But the moment consumption starts, I see a difference. That means if I consume one glass of this beverage and as opposed to this risk of one in the no consumption case, my actual risk is here slightly lower, close to 0.9897 something. So risk came down because of this consumption. If I consume another glass, then I can see that it came down further. Again, compare it with what is the risk when there is no consumption, that is here at one. And this is the risk when you do consume two glasses. This is now close to 0.92 something. So I do see that my risk is coming down as I am consuming, but that's not always. I see that there's a, a low point here somewhere after which the risk again starts increasing. Now this risk is also increasing compared to what I had here in the lower consumption range. It is still lower compared to the no consumption case. You can see how this is below the horizontal line except here when it first time crosses it which means if you consume sometime between something between 10 and 11 glasses then your risk actually is more than it would be in the no consumption situation. So very interesting to observe everything here. You should be absolutely clear with how we're comparing the horizontal and the solid line. Now let's read the question further. Okay, then it says for the entire adult population of country Y, the relative risk values could because of sampling error be either higher or lower than for the particular 10,000 sample. That is obvious. So I have this solid line which is about the 10,000 people. It is not the entire population as we discussed. So when you try to extend this result from a sample to the entire population, the actual risk numbers can be slightly higher than this or slightly lower than this. And that is what they have shown through the two broken lines. So I understand that the broken lines are about the risk with the entire population. The solid line is for the 10,000. 
10,000 sample. Okay, if you found the analysis of this data set helpful, then hit that like button so that other GMAT aspirants can also learn from it. And to stay tuned with such content, hit the subscribe button below. Now, to take your learning to the next level, we have put together a free trial in which you can experience content in all the sections tested on GMAT Focus Edition. For example, you can build your CR pre-thinking skills, you can learn how to approach statistics questions in graphics interpretation as part of DI, you can learn everything about linear inequalities as tested on the GMAT Focus Edition, and a lot of other content. The link for this is in the description. Now, let's get back to the question at hand. Now then, we have completely understood the data set. Now then, when we go into the question, we'll be comfortable with coming back and using data as needed. So let's see what the question is asking. And here, we have a certain statement and we have two blanks in the statement and these are the choices. We just have to see what works. So let's start reading the statement. Compared to the risk with no consumption of beverage Z, which is fine because throughout we've been talking about relative risk only due to this comparison. That means we're still talking about relative risk only, which is good. So compared to this, the reduction in relative risk of contracting this disease for adults of country Y is dash when the daily consumption is in this range. So we are talking about where is the reduction something. The reduction is greatest, the reduction is the least, or the reduction is unchanged compared to again the no consumption risk when something something happens, which is about how much consumption happened. So essentially what's happening is you have this horizontal line, the risk with no consumption, and you also have the sample line which looked something like this. We also had the actual broken lines, but the general shape is also exactly the same as the sample line. So I'll use this one to understand what's happening. Now, when you start here at the zero consumption mark, what is the reduction? The reduction is zero because you're not lower than the horizontal line at all. But as you go further, you increase your consumption, you can see that there is definitely some reduction happening in the risk every time. And how is it certain that this is a reduction? Obviously, because this blue curve is lower than this one with no consumption. Let's just make this very clear. This is the no consumption line. And because my blue curve is below this one, it means my risk is lower here due to the consumption. So this reduction in risk is what we're talking about. You are trying to see where is this reduction that we talked about, the greatest, unchanged or least. Now it's clear that your reduction is very low and the at the edges here when your consumption is either really low or your consumption is here at this stage where it crosses and goes across. But your consumption is greatest here when the curve is at the lowest point. So I'm going to see what consumption this actually corresponds to as we go to the actual graph here. At this point, let me ask you this. Could you have arrived at the approach of solving this question with this level of clarity had you not spent the effort in thoroughly understanding the information presented? Such is the power of the process of owning the data set. And because this skill may not come naturally to many of you, we have created a course architecture that ensures that we teach you this skill through every guided quiz in the EGMAT DI course and we reinforce the same in every practice quiz. In fact, the way we applied translate process skills so comfortably in this question, in the EGMAT course, you will learn how to build this translate process skill through purpose-built exercises. Thus, throughout the DI course, through around 500 questions, you will learn such process skills so that you can also comfortably use the owning the data set approach. Let's now get back to the solution at hand. Think about greatest consumption first because that is something more certain where I'm seeing the greatest dip, the lowest point. So if I see the lowest point on my sample curve, that's somewhere here. If I see the lowest point on this one here, the actual curve, it's here and it's here somewhere for my actual curve above. So overall, I see that the greatest dip is happening for a certain consumption level somewhere here between four and six glasses because it's changing according to which one I'm seeing, the actual dotted lines or the sample curve. Now, yes, my question here is talking about the reduction for the adults, for all the adults. But then I had all of this data extracted based on the sample. That's why I still looked at the sample as well. So I already have a feeling that when my consumption is somewhere in this range, I will have the greatest reduction. So let's see if we already have that as a choice and we do. So I have my answer already. The greatest reduction is happening at this stage, four to six classes. Now, one, two, three, seven to eight. If you try to observe these also, look, when I talk about one to three glasses, is it the greatest reduction? 
No, because greatest reduction is happening after that. Is it the least reduction? No, because a lower reduction than that is happening if I consume even less than one glass. You can clearly see how this is the region which is on the extreme left. Similarly, if I see it for the seven to eight glass range, which is the last option, is this the greatest reduction? No, I have greater reduction here. Is this the least reduction? No, I have lesser reduction here as I see when I was very, very close to the horizontal line. In the seven to eight case, there is a possibility that my actual curve is this one, right? In which case the reduction will not be the least, although it seems to be the least when I look at this curve on top. So I'm not very certain about the seven to eight case, although we were very certain when we talked about the four to six case that in any case, no matter which curve you look at, the two dotted ones or the solid one, in every case, this is what is giving me the lowest point on the curves and hence the greatest reduction. That's why this is the surest answer and we mark this. Now, if we summarize this nicely, we have this very interesting graph which became easy to understand when we read it in conjunction with all of this question text. We kept taking examples. We explicitly delved deep into this solid line, into the horizontal line. We took examples to see how this risk was changing with respect to this particular risk. After understanding everything completely, understanding what all of these three curves were, we went into this question stem. Here also, we first decided what our approach was going to be. We nicely visualized what this reduction was. When is the reduction going to be the greatest or the least? Reduction being unchanged really did not make much sense because it's either that there is no reduction or that, you know, the risk remains unchanged. So this one I didn't really look at. I could see that my reduction is going to be very, very low when I'm close to the edges and my reduction is going to be highest when I am here towards the center of this thing or wherever the lowest point is. And this being a more deterministic thing, not being two edges, just being one dip. That's why when I went into the main graph, I looked at the one dip first to find the greatest reduction. And then when I read that, we could very cleanly find the range in which that was happening as well. And we were done.